Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me and in front of me today, I talk about tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the plant review series with this glorious plant, and it's not in screen, I'll see if I can pick it up so you can see. It's very, very, very tall. And it is the Philodendron Dark Lord. Very cool plant with a very cool name. Now, as always, and as I'm starting to do with these videos, there will be chapters down below. So if you do not want to see the section where I kind of lay down some of the groundwork, please skip ahead to the first section, which is background. But for the new people here, welcome. And how I do these review series is, obviously they're going to be biased to my experience in my conditions, which is in the UK, and in my conservatory where the humidity is relatively high. And what I will do is I will share my experiences for this plant the same way that you might see like maybe an Amazon review for a product, because as far as I can see there's not a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people that will review plants. There's a lot of reviews on stores, but not on plants. And hopefully what is going to be achieved by this series is there will be a repository of information both mine and as more and more people watching this from comments from their own experiences down below in each one of these videos where you can see if you've just purchased this plant if you're thinking about purchasing this plant is it worth it essentially and with a lot of these plants i will have and hopefully the title of the video will have how long i've had this plant i think it's close to two years a lot of my plants have been with me for two years because I did get a lot of these plants around the same time. Interestingly enough, just before the pandemic, not during the pandemic where everybody else had them, but around the time before the pandemic, basically. And the areas that I'm going to be generally talking about are things like background, how this plant came into my care. Then I'll talk about uh, speed of growth. Then I'll look at ease of propagation. Then we can look at some of the availability and this one is the one that carries the heaviest caveat. Check the date down below because if you're looking at this in the future, it might be slightly out of date, both in terms of availability and in terms of price. And again, with availability, it's relevant to me in my location. And then wrapping up usually with pests. I'll see with this video because somebody made a good suggestion about maybe adding an extra little small section in these reviews where I talk about kind of accessories that this plant might need, any kind of tips on maybe fertilizing, moss poles, uh, planks, anything like that that might be necessary, or at least I found has worked in my situation for this specific plant. So I'll see if I can add that in as well. And then we'll kind of wrap up with final thoughts. I'll give my score out of 10. Also, if I would buy this plant again, knowing what I know. But yeah, enough of the kind of intro section. Let's move into the first topic. So moving into background, and I'll see if I can bring this in a bit closer because this plant <laughs> grows a bit ridiculously. Let me see, and as, as always, I will have a B-roll at the end of the video if you want to see proper close-ups of this plant. Gives you an idea that I am having to hold the support stick because otherwise it would just tip and fall over because this is normally on my plant shelf behind me there and it's actually attached to the plant shelf because if you see the size of the plant, let me show you the size of the plant and again <laughs> I'm looking up so I don't decapitate my plants with a ceiling fan but uh, you might be able to see, whoa this is actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be so it's in a net pot, you might be able to see some of the original leaves that came with this plant when I first got it and again I'll take these a bit more in the b-roll and just going down, and I'm going to have to go down with, you can see some of the newest leaves up there. <laughs> so let me do this, let me put that down, and as I said, B-roll for the close-ups. I might kind of show a few things as I'm talking, but yeah. So for those who might not know this plant, the Dark Lord, I hadn't heard of it years, for a few years, like when it came to my attention it was definitely on the top of my wish list and I'm so glad that I have finally got it. It generally will have quite dark green leaves, almost black, and the back 
is a bit of a maroon color. When it first comes in, I'm trying to see this new leaf without kind of snapping this plant in half. You might be able to see if I turn it around, it's actually not picking up as well on the camera, but believe me when I say these leaves come in and they're almost a blood red. They are awesome. Um, you might be able to see just the sheer volume of the aerial roots on this. And it is a prolific plant when it comes to kind of generating aerial roots. And we'll touch on propagation in a bit, but the way that this came to be in my care, as you saw, the initial leaves were quite small. And what I will normally do is I will put a picture here from my plant care app of what this plant looked like when I first got it. Same thing as I always say, please be kind. These pictures are not Instagram worthy. They are just literally for my plant care app. So they're a bit rough and ready. Um, but it came into my care. I found it on eBay, if I'm not mistaken. It was a very small plant. I don't think it was a rooted cutting. I think it was kind of already potted up and growing. And yeah, it was a great find because I've been looking at it for years, as I've mentioned, and I couldn't find it. I know it was a bit more available in the US at that point, but in Europe and the UK, it wasn't as available. At some point, shortly after I got it, ironically enough, uh, Kaylee Ellen did bring it into her rare plant store, and I think there was a few other people that then had it after her. Whether or not they also imported at the same time or whether or not they bought, cut it up, propagated it and then sold it on, I don't know. But it's a very, very cool plant. Now I know there was another plant that's very similar looking, which is the Philodendron Majesty, which I don't think this is, but it can look quite similar at times. I am pretty confident that this is the Dark Lord. Um, but yeah, the, the thing that I will say about this, and hopefully you might be able to see the petiole size is absolutely huge. And I'm trying to see if I can kind of lift. So I've got my, my plant resting on my foot. Um, you can see quite how long that is. And that is true for quite a few of these leaves. Whether or not it's the location that I had it or not, I don't know, but, um, I tend to think that the petioles on this are quite long. So it's a beautiful plant, don't get me wrong, but when you're growing it on a support stick, support sticks for the wind, or a moss pole or anything like that, and you get this, it can be a plant that takes up a lot of width in terms of space. So bear that in mind. But Overall, it was a relatively non-eventful purchase. It was, as I said, glad to find it. It was at a good enough price. We'll talk about that in availability. It came relatively quickly. I think I bought it around springtime, which was good because I wouldn't want to risk this in um, the colder months. And yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about background. Let's move on to the next topic. So speed of growth with this one, it's an interesting one. So normally with a lot of my plants that have got darker foliage like this one, I will try to give it slightly less light rather than more light because hopefully this might be something that you all have experienced as well, is with the darker leaved plants and I can see with some of these older leaves, I'll see if I can bring this around and bring it up so you might be able to see that one leaf there, which is a lot darker there, you can see that there, is that one's getting the least amount of light, so it is the darkest. But I give it a bit less light because the plants that I find are a bit darker, if you give it too much light, then the leaves will start washing out and going a bit brighter, which kind of defeats the purpose if you want a plant with darker leaves. Now that does mean that because it's getting less light, yes, it's darker leaves, it's also generally slower at growing. And I will say with this plant, this is definitely one of those situations where it can be a relatively slow grower. So again, our benchmark against a pothos, if a pothos in the summer might bring out two or three leaves a month in my care in the conservatory, and maybe one leaf in the winter. This is one of the philodendrons that I find almost entirely stops in the winter. So I might get zero growth or maybe one leaf or two throughout the entire kind of colder month. So it does kind of go pretty dormant at that point. 
now that the weather is starting to warm up and I've got two leaves back to back, three leaves technically, this is all in the span of about a month. So I've got two or three leaves in a month in the growing season. I don't know, I'll see if I can put it in the B-roll where you can see the little elbow that's happened there. I've also taken a cutting and I'll show you the propagate from it as well. And that took the cutting because it was growing too tall and it was gonna hit the top of my plant shelf. I have since had this much growth, which is now causing the same problem. So I probably will be taking yet another cutting now. But the one thing I will say, and I don't know whether or not it's because I took the cutting at the end of the growing season and I tried to propagate it straight into pond, that this mother plant took a beat to come back to kind of growth. So that's something to bear in mind as well. This is another one of my plants and I will show you this in the B-roll. Sorry, this is just a very difficult plant to keep lifting up, but you'll see how tiny the stem is, the original stem that's going into the soil. It's probably about the width of a chopstick and the width of the stem as it goes higher is almost at the width of my thumb. I can't find a better way of kind of describing the, the kind of size difference, which means that there's a lot of stress that's happening on a very thin stem at the bottom, which is another reason why I generally like to cut this to kind of relieve some of the pressure down below. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about speed of growth. It can be relatively slow or non-existent speed in the winter, and it does speed up in the summer. Now, ease of propagation, and I'm gonna see if I can bring up the propagate and try not to snap this plant whilst I'm putting it down, so bear with me. Right, I'm back and I've had to tie up <laughs> the mother plant because, again, it's just large and cumbersome, basically. But you might be able to see, this is the propagate. Um, you can see some of the older leaves. These are a bit lighter in color, I don't know whether or not this one will pick up how pink it can be, potentially. There is a new leaf on there as well. This is getting more light, so you can see the difference in the leaf shade that I was talking about. And this was a top cutting, and it did kind of, it wasn't getting an awful lot of light where I had it, where I was propagating it. So I'm assuming that's why it reverted back to slightly more juvenile leaves. And by juvenile leaves, you might have noticed, and hopefully you'll see this in the, the B-roll, so there are definitely lobes that happen at the top of this leaf when it's more mature. And these do have the lobes still, they're just a bit smaller. Um, the original juvenile leaves that I had on that plant were much more lance shaped, they didn't have any lobing at all. So I think it's just small leaves because it wasn't getting an awful lot of light. I've obviously now flipped it, so we'll see how it goes. But this is in pond, it's in self-watering, and I'll see if I can show you some of the roots as well. The roots are kind of cool. They are quite um, a ready maroon color. But with this plant, the propagation was interesting. As I said, I've only ever cut it and propagated it once. So I can only speak from that one experience, which probably isn't gonna be kind of the, the most accurate one. If you've propagated yours a few times and you've got some experiences, please do share it down below. I would like to know as much as anybody else. But what I found with this, it was very slow to get going. When it did get going, it was doing well. I gave it slightly lower light levels than I probably should have done when it was propagating. So it did take four months to root out before I started seeing any new growth. But as I said, it's it was low light levels, it was also propagating around other Monstera alba leaves and what happened is all the Monstera alba leaves kind of pretty much stuck to the light and gave the light, the plants underneath it even less light. So probably a bit of a failed experiment in that respect, but it still propagated nicely, it went straight into pond, it did okay with straight into pond as well. But you can see what I mean about the, the petioles being quite large I mean, even on some of this newer growth, they are quite um, an awkward growing plant. So maybe something to bear in mind there. Moving on to availability. And I've got the mother plant in front of me again and I'm holding it again because otherwise it will not stay upright. 
So availability, I touched on it briefly on background. It really wasn't a plant, at least in the UK and Europe, that you would see available very often at all. Back when I got it, probably about two years ago now. And based on what I'm seeing now, there are some that do become available, but not in mass. Whether or not it's because not an awful lot of people know about this plant, or maybe not that many people want this plant, I don't know. But you do, they are, you can generally find them now on something like eBay as a cutting or a rooted cutting. You might very rarely have I ever seen them in the plant store, obviously. It's a relatively difficult plant to come across. Um, but yes, they're slightly more available, at least here in the UK. When I got this plant as a relatively small plantlet, essentially, I probably paid, I don't think it was high double digits, I think it was low triple digits. Low, low triple digits, because I'm cheap. But uh, yeah, it was relatively affordable. The interesting thing that I will say about this when I first got it, and I was very unsure, and there was very little written, and I think even now there's not that many people to talk about this plant specifically, is when you get the juvenile form, it doesn't grow with the red backs, and the leaves look entirely different to what the mature form looks like. There's also, I would always hazard a guess now, having had this plant in my care, an awful lot of edited images on Instagram, which makes the red a lot more red than it ever will be. At least this has been in my experience. <laughs> Please do let me know if you've got this plant and you've noticed something similar and just kind of go, mine is never that red. I think there's just a lot of filters that are happening on Instagram potentially to make that red a bit more bright. But uh, still a glorious plant, by the way. But with availability in the UK, as I said, it's got a bit better. The prices are similar, I think, to when I first bought it. Maybe a smidge down. I don't think they are considerably cheaper than when I first bought it. Now, as I said, it might be because that many people know about it, maybe not that many people know about it either or want it. It also might be that it's because it's a bit of a slower grower at times and I'll use my experience and I might be wrong, it might just be my care with propagation. It does take a while to propagate it. The prices will probably remain a bit high. I don't think this is a plant that lends itself too easily for a bigger mass market kind of situation. I would hazard a guess there. The other thing I will say about kind of Availability is a lot of people would probably want the slightly more mature leaves or at least to see one of the leaves being kind of a more mature leaf because of what I was mentioning earlier on. That juvenile form does look quite different. The leaves are more lance shape. You don't get the readiness. You don't get any of the dark darkness necessarily. So I would imagine if somebody got what I got and didn't know any better, they might go, well, you've sent me the wrong plant and there's only so much you can do to convince somebody that it is and it's just the juvenile form of that plant. Especially when there's not that much information on the mature and the juvenile form online. At least there wasn't then, there might be a bit more now. I haven't checked recently to know for sure. So moving on to pests with this one. So I will say that generally this hasn't been a plant that has had an awful lot of pests with it. Um, the occasional mealybug, because I've got mealybugs in here. I don't think I've ever had spider mites on it, touch wood. Um, I will say now, and I've done a separate video of kind of come along with me for plant care. Recently I've started having some issues with whitefly in the conservatory. There has been some whitefly on this plant but there's been white fly on a lot of plants that have got very kind of leathery leaves and they've got big leaves because they can hide behind them. But overall, it's not been a particularly pest prone plant in my experience. On to the new topic area for these reviews, which is kind of accessories. I'm going to call it accessories, but it will be everything else really. Does this need a support stick or a moss pole? Yes. 
essentially is the answer to that. <laughs> it is a clamming philodendron. That's why it also has kind of substantial area roots. This is not a crawling philodendron. You can kind of see that the leaves would be aimed towards capturing the light and moving as much as they are. The, the petioles are quite large as well. So moss pole you'll definitely need or a support stick. I'd be curious to see what this would be like on uh, plank. The problem that you'll get with plank is the plank will probably be replicating its natural environment a lot more than either the moss pole or the support stick will do. But based on how tall this plant can get, especially when you give it slightly lower light levels in order to get the darker leaves because it will stretch and etiolate a bit more. And in terms of etiolation and any of the other geeky scientific planty terms, I've got another video, so I'll link it at the top there. But with this plant, definitely support stick, definitely a moss pole. Choose your poison, essentially, with that one. Um, the other thing that you probably noticed at the very beginning of the video, I've got this in a net pot. I have always kept this very, very airy. I've had it in an arrowed soil mix. I have since propagated it in ponds, so I know that that works as well. But just to give you an idea again of how small the pot is for the size of the plant, that's how tiny the pot is, that's how huge the plant is. Granted, I think very, very soon, this is gonna have to get repotted into a bigger net pot, just because, in all fairness, this, mm, maybe not. Uh, it's not actually using up water particularly quickly, and I don't wanna like flood it too much, but I'll see basically. It might get repotted soon, or it might not clear as mud. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I will say obviously support stick, have something in terms of ties to tie up to the support stick. In terms of fertilizer with this one, I do use liquid gold leaf. I've got the link down below. I'm not affiliated with liquid gold leaf. This is obviously not sponsored, but it's what I use and this plant always loves it. Uh, in terms of pest management, as I said, I don't have a lot of pests with this, but if I would, I would probably treat it the same way with kind of my neem oil solution that I would do for this. Um, the one thing I will definitely say with this one is try not to overwater. So having something like a moisture meter would be good. And I'm trying to think about any other accessories that you might need for this, really. I think that's pretty much it. Something, some form of light, airy soil mix. Pond works as well. A net pot would be good. A terracotta, I've had it growing in terracotta and it was doing fine in terracotta as well. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for this. Obviously spray it down, I, I would do with my neem oil. Yeah, I think that's everything. There's, there's nothing particularly special that this plant needs un, that would be different from any other kind of climbing philodendron really. Moving on to final thoughts now. Start with the usual one that I always start. Knowing what I know now, if I didn't have this plant, would I purchase this plant? 100%. This was a wish list plant, and two years later, I understand. And I still kind of stand by the thought that this was a wish list plant for me, and I, I yeah, very, very happy to have got this. It's not a particularly difficult plant, so in that respect, I think I would definitely repurchase, or I would purchase if I didn't have it, but I knew what I knew now. Is it worth the price if you get it at a decent low triple digit? Yeah. I don't know if I would pay a lot more than that for this plant, because this is one that you need to show patience with. And the people that have been here for a while know that I really don't have an awful lot of patience, this is one of the plants that really taught me patience because I wanted it. I wanted it a lot when I first got it in my care. It was very exciting. I still get very excited when I talk about this plant. It's very, very cool. But I think that's probably linking it. I, I like darker plants and the fact that it's also red when it grows in. <laughs> it appeases the, the goth youth that I used to be when I was younger, basically. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, very, very much I would definitely purchase this plant. Now a score of between zero and 10 in terms of where I would rank this. Some of you might think based on what I've just said now that this would probably be a 10. I would say it's between an eight and a nine, maybe. For a philodendron. For 
other, if I'm relating it to any other house plant, I'd probably say between a seven and an eight, actually. And I'll explain that. So for a philodendron, the reason why it's as high as it is, is because it can be quite unique in its coloration, basically. The leaves aren't particularly different than some other kind of climbing philodendrons, but it is unique enough in the way that it grows. And as I said, that goth gothic nature of it all, I do like. And I think this, if grown correctly in the right environment, could also be a very beautiful kind of display showcase plant in a very, I would say either a gothic kind of space or a very modern space. It's, it's definitely striking in its kind of form, essentially. So that's that. In terms of the slightly lower score as a whole for a house plant, it would be because of these very, very long petioles. <sighs> for me, at least, because I've got so many plants and I've got them in a relatively small space, it's a bit cumbersome and it's a bit of an awkward shape and the way that it grows. Now, as I said just now, obviously it can be quite architectural if you give it enough support and it's kind of standing somewhere, the fact that it's so open and so wide would probably work quite nicely. But in my care and where it is and the way that it grows, yeah, that, that is a bit of a downside because you do get a lot of empty space between the leaves with this. Some people like that, so that's absolutely fine as well. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say for this plant. This has been a long time coming. And you can understand now, as we're going more and more into these reviews, I'm trying to pick plants out of very awkward places <laughs> that probably haven't been moved for months. And it's probably a good thing that they are being moved, but they have grown around their space really difficult, like in a really interesting way. So actually when I was trying to take this plant out, it nearly decapitated my Splendid, my Monstera Thai constellation, and my Philodendron Prince of Orange, all in one fell swoop. So, <laughs> so sometimes when, when you request a video for a plant that I have that might be mature, that might be in a difficult location, and it takes a while for me to get there, is I'm, I'm trying to egg myself on <laughs> to try and remove it from its location and not have to deal with a similar situation that I am now, where I am literally have been holding this plant the whole time, and I can't just let it go because it will just snap, basically. But yeah, enough about that. Hopefully I haven't prattled on too, too long for this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you've got your own review, as always, please do drop it down below. And yeah, hopefully I shall see you very soon. Thanks. Bye.